Welcome back to part two, where we are going to be continuing in building a DAP from start to finish. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the testing of a smart contract writing test so we can test it out before deploying it. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel, aka Hashlips, and like I said, this is part two of a four part video series. So watch part one if you are confused right now. In this part, we will cover testing. So let's jump right in. This is exactly where we left off the last time. I'm going to close the deployer script as well as our contract. Then I'm going to open this testing folder and let's go ahead and rename this file to rather be our manager. So this is going to be our manager dash test. In this file, what we're doing is we making use of hard at as well as the chai library to do some tests. We are going to be deploying our contract, an instance of our contract, and then calling functions on it to make sure that the test passes. Tests are very simple. And the only thing that you'll need to know for now is that we can get to describe what kind of test suite we want to test and then run some functions, some case statements on these tests. Let's go ahead and replace some of these greeter functions from the old code base into our new manager code base. So let's go ahead and replace the greeter up here with our manager. And then here where it says greeter, change that into manager as well as manager over here because we would like to deploy an instance of our manager.sol contract that's sitting there. Here we're going to as well just have a manager variable that we can then query and we're going to wait for it to be deployed. Again, we would like to uh, just replace this one to deploy the contract, pass in no variables. Now you will immediately recognize that this is almost exactly the same that's happening in our scripts uh, deploy script over here. And that is because indeed it does. It kind of instantiates them to set it up to be able to test on. Then let's get rid of this because I want to start up with a minimal test to show you what's really happening. On the outside, we have got a wrapping function, which is describe. This just describes the set of tests that we are going to run. The it uh, function over here basically is the case. So for instance, we can say it should do something. In our case, we can maybe say um, it should create a new ticket. And this is our first uh, basically test, right? It should create a new ticket. Now, what needs to happen? Well, we need to first launch our contract and wait for it to be deployed. Once we have this, we can actually use the manager and call some functions on it. Wait for a response and then test if it was true or false. Let's go ahead and write our first test. The next thing that we will want to do is after we actually have the contract deployed, we can await and create our ticket. We can call the manager now, which is our contract. And if you remember on the contract itself, we have this create ticket function. We can say, well, manager.create ticket and pass it in a name. I'm going to just simply call this test. Now, this is going to await execution, but we'll need a way to read the ticket. So let's go ahead and say we will get our tickets. So we'll get all the tickets. And um, so let's just assign this to a variable tickets. And we can also say this needs to be a wait for the manager dot get tickets. So remember where we uh, got this from. If we go back to our contract, here is the get tickets function as well. The get tickets returns to us a list of tickets. So technically in here we'll get a list. Now, if we just go ahead and console.log this out, we will see the returned values. 
I'm going to save it and then go ahead and run it in the terminal, the test, to check out the log. In our terminal, I'm going to press command K to clear it out and then run the following command, npx hard at test. Hard at will know to check in this test directory and go and actually run each test with this extension. So I'm going to click enter. We can see that manager ran and then we get this output. The actual list. We can see that there's a zero status and the first element has a name called test. So we can basically check the very first element in the array because every time this runs we deploy a new instance of our contract. So we know that every time we create the ticket here it will always be at index zero. With this knowledge we can now conclude our test by the following. We can say, well, we should expect, which is a function from chai, we can expect something. Now we would know that the ticket index zero dot name should basically equal to test, right? So how you do this is say dot two uh, dot equal, and then you basically pass in whatever it should equal to. Let me just type in and say this should equal Daniel, which is totally false. And we can also remove the log. If we run this now, this test in the uh, terminal should fail. And indeed it does. We can see that our test expected test to equal to Daniel. And what it actually got was test as input and the expected one was Daniel. So it's a failed test. But if we go and change the ticket that we create to Daniel and we run it again, we should then see the test passes. One passing. Best practice to start off with failing tests, rectifying them to have an expected output. Now our test should pass every single time unless the code changes. For instance, if we now go to the manager.sol and actually just enter a bunch of garbage and we go and test our contract we will actually get a failing test so let's test it and here we go it fails because our code changed and that is why tests are so important let's fix that test it again and see our expected output but we cannot only have one test and the more we duplicate this code, the more of these instances we are going to create. And that's not necessarily what we want to do for our test case. You can do that, but I like doing it like this. I like to include a manager variable as long as there's an instance ma manager variable as well. And then I move this code over here into this before statement. This function over here will run before all of these tests. So now that I have this, I can basically uh, just make sure that we are awaiting and assigning uh, these to manager and not re-declaring them like so. And now when this runs, we will have access to the manager as well as the instance. And our test should still run fine. That means that we can now go ahead and duplicate another test and maybe test something else in here. For instance, we can say that this should update the ticket name. Now, remember in our contract, we've got the update ticket name. This takes in the index as well as a name. So we're going to paste this in there and we're going to say this is at index zero and our new name is maybe going to be new Daniel. And because we have a new name, we are checking it again with the same piece of code here. And when we save it and run the test, we should now have two tests that pass. We have one where we create a ticket and one where we update the ticket name. You can write as many tests as you like. I'm gonna paste in two more tests that I've written these two. This one over here just changes the state and checks it much the same as the name change. 
instead of updating a name, we update ticket status and we pass in a new status of three and we check if it's equal to three. This one here checks the length of the tickets array down here. After we create three more tickets, so the length should be four. So if we save this and we run it down here, we should have four uh, tests that pass. And this is great because it means that we now have a test that we can run every time that we update our contract. Okay, great. We have our test. I've cleared the terminal and I'm going to show you the workflow that I recommend when you're doing smart contracts. Whenever you go ahead and change something in your smart contract, make sure that there's a test for it in here. After that, a good practice is to run uh, mpx hardat compile. And then once you've compiled it, it will tell you if your contract code is fine. The contract code might be fine, but you still might be missing something with your logic. And that's why the test is important. So first run compile, then we do our test. When that passed, then only we're going to deploy it to our network. And that is the workflow. And if you keep that in mind, you will surely minimize bugs in your code and be way more happier with what you put out. Testing code is a big subject and we can't cover it all, but you surely now know the basics to get started. Next in the video series, we will be looking at how we can hook up the front end so that it can interact with our contract on the local chain. Stick around for that video, but please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, uh, you know what to do and see you in the next video. Cheers for now.